Welcome to Grow with Amanda. A note from the Psychiatric Association. Dear citizens, it's normal during quarantine to talk to your plants. Kindly contact us if they respond. Let's talk about the psych ward, shall we? Everybody has an idea of what the psych ward is because of what the media presents it as, especially in movies and TV shows. And I just want to end that stigma. The psych ward is not this crazy, terrifying place that only the completely insane people go. Yeah, there are people like that there, but that's not all the psych ward is for. And so this video is going to basically break down what the psych ward is and some things that I wish I knew before going into a psych ward. So in the psych ward, there's two separate units. There's the normal part of a psych ward and then there's PIC, Psychiatric Intensive Care. And PIC is really the side that I think the movies grab their information from because yeah, that side can be pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. People in PIC can be tied down, can be in their room with nothing but a mattress, can be locked in their rooms. They don't have as many privileges. Some of them have to eat in their room without utensils. It's really for the safety of the patient but also for the safety of the staff and everybody around. Now there's also the normal side. I've only ever been on the normal side. I've been threatened to be thrown into pick because of my behavior, but I've never really actually experienced it firsthand, so I can't really speak too much about it. I've had friends who have been on the side of pick, and let me tell you, they say that they wish they behaved while on the normal side of the psych ward because pick is intense. There is really a bundle of reasons as to why somebody can be admitted to this psych ward, but I'm just going to name a few of them so that you kind of have a rough idea of what kind of help it can offer. So if you're in a manic state, a really depressive state, perhaps you're suicidal, perhaps you have attempted suicide, you could be in a catatonic state, you could be in psychosis, you could also be withdrawing from drugs and alcohol. You could have dementia, you could have schizophrenia, and not just, oh, I live with dementia or I live with schizophrenia, but more in the sense that I'm having a really bad episode while being diagnosed with those things, so you would be admitted to the psych ward so that they can monitor you. If you're having homicidal ideation, which is basically the thought of wanting to hurt other people, you can also be admitted. Also, if you're medically withdrawing off of a medication, you can be admitted because some of the withdrawal symptoms for the meds that people are put on for their mental health can be very, very intense to come off of, like life-threatening intensity. Like I said, there are so many other reasons why you can be admitted, but those are just a handful of them. Now, when you're admitted, you're either going to be a voluntary admission or an involuntary admission. So if you're a voluntary admission, this might be because you need to come off of a medication, but you want to be supervised while doing so. So you voluntarily go to the hospital and ask to be admitted. Now, an involuntary admission, there's four forms that you can be put on. Form one is you're gonna be admitted for a minimum of three days, and every time you are admitted on any of these forms, you'll be given a psychiatric evaluation. And basically, this is when a psychiatrist is going to monitor you along with the other staff that are in the psych ward, and they're gonna determine how they can help you and how much help you really require. A form three, you're gonna be there for two weeks, minimum, and a form four, you're there for a minimum of a month. There's also a form two. Now, form two is a little different because this is when somebody who's close to you, like a family member or a really close friend, perhaps a teacher, a doctor, is basically going to call the authorities, which is the police, and they're going to come and physically bring you to the hospital whether you want to go or not. I've known quite a few people, including my former roommate, who has had to have this form put on them, and when this happens, you are brought there and then they determine what other form you're gonna be put on as well. Now, each of these forms do have a time frame when you are on them, but that doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to be let go after three days if you're on a form one or after two weeks if you're on a form three. Basically, it's just a guideline. So yeah, you are stuck there for that time period unless your psychiatrist deems you safe for yourself and for others and discharges you prior to your form being complete. They can choose when you go and when you stay, especially if you're involuntary. If you're voluntary, you do get to choose in a sense, 
but it's more along the lines of if you decide that you are going to discharge yourself while being voluntary, you will not get help after the fact. Whereas if you're discharged by a psychiatrist, you are guaranteed a follow-up appointment with them. In the psych ward, there's multiple different staff members that are going to be there to help you to get better. So obviously there's a psychiatrist, which you will get to see a psychiatrist every single day. When you are admitted, whether it's voluntary or involuntary, you are assigned a psychiatrist and they will get to see you every single day. You're not guaranteed what time you'll see them, but you are guaranteed to see them. There's also the nurses. So the nurses are your main go-to people. They are gonna be there 24 seven. You'll have a night nurse and you'll have a day nurse that is assigned to you. That's who you go to when you need assistance. That's who gives you your medication. That's who monitors you. There's also reactivation workers. The reactivation workers are basically there to help keep you entertained during the day. They also have like journals, they have workbooks that you can go through in order to help yourself while you're there. They have a wide range of things that they do for you. They'll bring you for walks, they'll run groups for you. It really all depends on what resources they have in order to share with you. There's also a family doctor, which you will see at least one time while you're there. If you have any other physical problems that come up during your stay at the psych ward, they will also be there to help you. There's the kitchen staff, obviously, because all your meals are provided for you. There's also the cleaning staff. They don't clean your room like a hotel would clean your room, but they are there to clean the entire floor and to also make sure that if you need to change your bed sheets or something happens and you need new linen, they will provide that for you. There's also social workers. Now, a social worker, you have to be referred to by the psychiatrist that you are assigned. There's also AA and NA members that will come in to lead groups for you because like I said when you're in a psych ward you could be withdrawing off of drugs and alcohol so getting started into the AA or NA program is really beneficial for you. Whether you're voluntary or involuntary if you try to leave without warning or you sneak out a code will be called on you and security will go after you and if you leave the hospital without security finding you the police will be sent after you. If they believe that you are still a threat to yourself or other people. So while you're at this psych ward, there's privileges that you can have. All have to be approved by your psychiatrist. So some of the privileges include things like you can go for walks with the reactivation workers just around the property that you are on. You're also allowed passes. Now not everybody gets access to these passes, but when you're on a pass, there's a supervised and there's unsupervised passes. I've had the experience to have both of them. My supervised passes were things like I needed to go home to check on my apartment, to check on my animals, to gather things like clothing because I was going to be in the psych ward for quite a while. An unsupervised pass is when your psychiatrist trusts you enough to leave the psych ward but also come back without having touched any drugs or alcohol or driving a car while you are out. I got a pass like that for when I was going to my Voices for Women, which was a program that I was in for my PTSD. Now obviously there's a lot of different reasons why a psychiatrist might give you a pass, but you're also not guaranteed to get a pass, so keep that in mind. While you're in the psych ward, there are items that you are allowed to have and items you're not allowed to have. So things that you're not allowed to have, no matter what, and it's not just for your safety, it's for everybody else's safety, is you're not allowed strings. So any strings on clothing, whether it's pants, sweaters, shirts, doesn't matter, you're not allowed them because they can be taken out and used as a weapon. You're not allowed a phone or anything that has a camera on it for confidentiality reasons. It's just not allowed. You are allowed iPods or MP3 players that don't have a camera on it if you want to listen to music. If you have headphones that are wired and not wireless, most of the time you will have to return those headphones to the nurse's station because again, it might not just be for your safety but for other safety as well. You are allowed things to knit with, you are allowed things like hardcover books, but they have to be kept at the nurse's station and you're not guaranteed to be allowed those objects. If they don't think that you're safe enough to manage those, you're not gonna be allowed them. Obviously with COVID, there's a lot more restrictions as to what you're allowed to do and what you're allowed in the psych ward with you. It's a lot more frustrating because you're super isolated when you're in the psych ward to begin with, let alone during COVID, you're even more isolated. 
I was unfortunately in the psych ward at the start of COVID, so I was in there when there was the transition from what you're usually allowed to what you weren't allowed, and it was a pretty intense switch. What's the process when you get admitted? Let me walk you through it. So if you're ever in the position where you are admitted to the psych ward, you feel a little bit more prepared. So they start off by taking all your belongings, including your clothing, and they give you a gown. And while you're waiting in the emergency department to be brought to the psych ward, you're basically just sitting there waiting, unfortunately. Once you're brought upstairs, you're shown around. You're shown where your room is. You're shown where you will be eating because like I said, all your meals are supplied to you. You're shown where a schedule can be found because there will be a schedule as to what goes on for meal time and also for the reactivation workers and what they have planned for you. You're shown where the shower is, where the bath is. You're shown where the laundry facility is. You'll be shown where there's a computer and where the phones are. Most psych wards only have one, maybe two computers if you're lucky. It really just depends on the size of the psych ward and the financial means that they have to devote to the psych ward. They'll show you where your room is and they'll let you get settled in. While you're kind of getting oriented as to where everything is, the nurses will be going through all of your belongings to determine what is acceptable and what is not acceptable to have. You'll then basically be let free. Keep in mind you are gonna be monitored through cameras. The only place a camera is not gonna be is in your bedroom. You'll then be assigned your psychiatrist and you'll get to put together a plan with them as to how you can help yourself, what they can do to help you, and how you can begin to recover. Here's a few things that I wish I knew before going into the psych ward. I think I would have had a much easier stay if I had known these things prior to. So one is breathe. Just breathe. You are there for a reason. You are getting the help that you require. It might seem pretty terrifying, but I promise you, you'll get through it. Also, the psych ward is not a scary place. I want people to know that it's a place that you can go to access help if you require it. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to shy away from. It's just another place, like going to see a therapist, like going to see a family doctor. It's just another place for help. Don't put up a front while you're there pretending like you're okay just so you can get out. Because they're there to help you, they want to help you, and in order to do that, you need to fully present yourself as you are and not put up this fake front so that you can just get out as soon as possible. Set boundaries. With other patients, I wouldn't recommend becoming friends with anybody. I have made some connections with people and I am currently connecting with somebody that I met the very first time I was in the psych ward and we were roommates. But we both have done our healing separately and now we are coming back together to reconnect. Everybody else that I tried to just stay connected with the second I got out of the psych ward, former roommates, former best friends, they have all been a shit show. A complete and utter shit show. I would really discourage becoming friends with anybody. Yeah, you might want to stay connected with people, but don't stay so connected that they're part of your everyday life. I would highly, highly, highly discourage that, and the nurses try to discourage that as well. Be patient. You're going to need to learn patience. The food is going to show up at a certain time, and if it doesn't, there's nothing you can do. You have to be patient. Your psychiatrist is going to be there every day for you, but they're not going to be there at the time that you want them to be there. They're on their own schedule. I would highly recommend journaling, not just about what's going on, but ask those deep questions. Figure out why you're there. Figure out what you believe would help you. I would read the patient's rights and advocacy and understand them. And if you aren't able to understand them because you don't have the mental capacity at that moment to do so, have somebody that you trust enough to advocate for you. Participate in what the reactivation workers have in store for you. Bring something that comforts you. As long as it's approved by the nurses and your psychiatrist, I would bring it. For me, it was a weighted blanket. It made me feel comfortable, it helped with my anxiety, it had the scent of my home in it. And the last thing I would highly recommend is if you don't understand why a rule is there, ask. Ask them to explain it to you. The amount of times I fought with my nurses because I didn't understand why they had told me I couldn't do something was ridiculous. I treated the nurses so poorly at times because I was so frustrated as to why those rules were in place and all I had to do was ask. The rules are there for a reason. It might not be 
because you require those rules, but they can't pick and choose what rules they use for people and what rules they don't use. It's an all-around rule for everybody's safety, not just your own. If you know somebody that might need to hear some of the things I talked about in this video, please send this to them. I want to try to normalize the psych ward. I want people to know that it's a place that offers assistance and is not what the movie's dictated as, and you, can't, you don't have to be this crazy, messed up person to go there. If you require help, it's just another place to go. So if you guys learned anything today, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and get ready to grow with Amanda. Be a hundred percent you. I'm so in my mouth. What was that? What was that? Okay. Let's talk about chicks, me, me. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that make me. Let's talk about sex. Okay.